All right, guys, today is the maxilla versus mandible, why you cannot actually widen the hole of your lower jawbone. This is not how it works. A lot of people think because I, you know, my jaw got wider that the actual bone itself got wider. That's not the case. You know, when the maxilla rotates, the mandible falls up, the maxilla is connected to the skull, the mandible is not, so it adapts to keep the occlusion, you know, balanced in most cases. So, um, this is my horrible diagram of the mandible. You see, um, this is the condyle. This is like the, the body and then the chin right here. Front profile, when it's not rotated, so it's it's drooping down with the maxilla. So say you recess maxilla, maxilla is up here, it's recessed, the mandible also is down. Look at the front profile, see how the angle is also a very acute angle. But then when the mandible, so side profile again, comes up, when it comes up, look at it from the front, the angle is a lot bigger. So my jaw itself, the actual mandible, it cannot become wider. The actual bone itself cannot become wider naturally. To actually widen your mandible, it cannot be widened without a surgical procedure. Um, for example, a lot of people, especially within this community, they want, you know, they, they say train your masseters you know, train these jaw muscles. But in reality, the only thing that really matters is your jaw bone width. Yes, you can train your masseters and get a little bigger. Um, you know, you want them moderately big, but like when people have like these obnoxious masseter muscles, it just looks, you know, crazy. And it doesn't look natural, it looks stupid when you have these big hunks of meat hang hanging on the sides of your jaw. When in reality, you know, you want a bigger jaw bone. Also, another thing I wanna, I wanna explain real quick is that a lot of people ask if the uh, mandible will also, like the mandibular arch will be widened while thumb pulling, which is not the case at all. When I say the mandible adapts to the maxilla, I'm talking about how you know it rotates. I'm not talking about the width. So in most cases, when people have a narrow maxilla, their maxillary arch is narrower than their mandibular arch, but a correct bite, their maxillary arch should be you know wider, a little bit wider than their mandibular arch. Um, but if you're starting out and you have a narrow maxilla, but you also have a very narrow mandibular arch, um, that is not ideal because you're going to want to expand the maxilla, but then you're going to have this weird bite afterwards because your mandible you d didn't adapt to it. So when I started out, my mandibular arch was already like significantly, significantly wider than my, ma my maxilla. So when I widened my maxilla, it wasn't that big of a deal because now they match. Um, but if your mandibular arch is also super narrow, you're gonna need a Schwartz expander. But also another thing I wanna point out is the Schwartz expander is not gonna actually widen your mandible bone. If you wanna widen your whole of the mandible bone, you're gonna need a significant um, osteonomy procedure. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, hope that clears some things up for you guys. I've heard a lot of questions relating to these topics, so you guys do with that information.